We've tested around a half dozen robot mowers. Which ones impressed us most and which ones from CES are we excited to try? Stay tuned. Robotic mowing technology has really improved, but not all robot mowers work well. Since we're in the off season, we wanted to take a look at models we tested in our thoughts, along with a look at what CES 2025 had to offer. Of course, we'll start with Husqvarna, a company that has made robot mowers for 25 years. Tested their first all-wheel drive model, the 435X all-wheel drive, in 2020. It is a beast of a mower, even if it wasn't terribly smart. Many Husqvarna mowers require boundary wires, and our experience with the EPO system was a disappointment, our test yard with minimal sky obstructions wasn't compatible. We still recommend the Husqvarna Auto Mower for large yards and commercial applications. It's built to utilize multiple mowers simultaneously, but residential yards don't need this. Next up is the Segway Nano Mower. We tested the 110N last spring. It had some of the best navigation of any mower we had seen in its price class thanks to onboard AI and machine learning. While curb detection remembering obstacles at the time of our review was an issue, Segway has worked to improve on its technology. And at $12.99, it's truly affordable, just no all-wheel drive, which we felt held it back. In the summer, we tested the Sunseeker Orion X7, which does have all-wheel drive. While the app was way too busy for us, the operation of the mower was thankfully not. The AI in the Orion X7 worked even better than the Navimo. It remembered obstacles from session to session, resulting in a more optimized mode. Calling the Mowrader a robot mower is generous since it's more like a remote control vehicle, but it is a ton of fun. However, with a price tag that's well above most other mowers, over $3,000, the Mow Raider may be too much of an expensive toy for some, and we'd understand that too. All that aside, the Mow Raider has a 21 inch full size cutting blade, so the cut is no different than a riding mower. We're ending our list with the Yarbo as we haven't been able to test the mower just yet. However, our experiences with the snow blowing side has been nothing short of awesome. I will say that this feels like an early Tesla with the amount of things that don't work quite as well as they should out of the box, but the technology here is promising, and we can't wait for the spring. Okay, Segway did not give us what we wanted in terms of an all-wheel drive model. However, they did introduce the X3, its first mower for medium to large size lawns from half to two and a half acres and up to 27 degree slopes, slightly better than the H series. Also new is a trimmer, which Yarbo itself is set to introduce this year. The Limo 1 isn't really new. After all, it was announced at last year's CES, but they're back this year to announce it's actually a real thing, and we're pretty excited. This promo video is what they sent out last year ahead of the initial announcement, and if it can do anything like the video shows, you won't need to worry about your robot mower getting stuck anywhere. Mamotion was probably the busiest of all the robot manufacturers at CES with a slew of announcements. We're focused on the mini versions of both the Yuka and the Luba, which also answered one of our complaints last year that they seemed a bit overpriced for the market. Finally, Anchor announced a robot mower based on the Kickstarter-funded Terramo available in Europe to be called the Yufi E18 Lombot here. There aren't a whole lot of details, but we're in contact with Anchor and hope to have this for review as soon as spring returns. So even though we were quite busy last year, 2025 is shaping up to be just as busy in lawn robotics. We'll be following it all, along with some great reviews starting in the spring. We'd also like to hear what robots you've seen recently that caught your eye. Leave a comment below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.